Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video I'm going to be reviewing and demoing the free video editing software CapCut. So I get a lot of comments here on YouTube about what video editing software I use. I typically use Adobe Premiere Pro because I pay for all the Adobe apps so I just get it with that bundle. I use a lot of the other apps for other things. I use Illustrator sometimes, I use After Effects sometimes, so it's worth it for me to subscribe to the full bundle. That being said, a lot of people out there don't want to subscribe to the full Adobe suite because they don't want all those other apps and they just want Photoshop and Lightroom, which you can get in a single subscription for about $20 a month, I think. But the problem with that is it'll leave you without any video editing software. So it's because of this, I think I get a lot of comments here on the channel asking if there's any good video editing software out there that's free, and CapCut is one of those. It's surprisingly full featured for a free software and spoiler alert, it's totally capable of editing real estate videos. It has features that I use in Premiere, like all the features that I'm looking for really, such as color correction, speed ramping, transitions, all that stuff that you might want for a real estate video edit is in there and it's free. So it's pretty incredible. I'm gonna show you all these features now in the demonstration. It even has some features that Adobe Premiere doesn't have that are pretty cool. So let's dive in and take a look. Before we continue on with this video, I just wanna share a quick word about our sponsor, PixelMob. Are you looking for a professional real estate photo editor to help lighten your workload? Are you having a hard time finding a good and reliable editor or don't even know where to look for one? Or maybe you just personally struggle with editing and can't seem to achieve the professional end result that you've been looking for? If any of this sounds like you, you should definitely check out PixelMob. PixelMob helps take the guesswork out of finding a reputable editor and connects you with the right people to do the job. PixelMob is an awesome website that links you up with available editors capable of doing just about any sort of real estate photo editing you can imagine, including HDR blending, flambient, virtual staging, object removal, etc. The best part of all is that PixelMob vets all the editors prior to allowing them onto their platform to ensure that they can indeed deliver on what they say they can. I also really like that there's a peer review system where photographers can rate the editors from one to five stars, giving you further tools and helping you choose the best editor to work with for your particular job. The editor also does not get paid until you are satisfied with your order. If you've ever been in the search for an editor and tried a few out, then you know full well there's been a, such a sore need for something like PixelMob in our industry, and I really think a lot of us real estate photographers can benefit from this service. It's completely free to sign up, and if you use my link, pixelmob.com IREP, you will receive $5 in credit towards your first order, so there's no reason to at least not give it a try. You'll also find that link down in the description of this video. All right guys, so here I have CapCut open and the first thing I'm gonna do here is just hit new project. Now we'll open you know, the project here and the first thing we need to do is import our media. So I'm gonna hit the import button here, pretty self-explanatory. I have a drone video that I shot the other day, so that's an edit I already did, but I'm just going to select all these clips and I have a music uh, file in here too. So I'm just gonna select all those and hit import. So you'll see instantly, I've imported all these into the, you know, bin here. So one thing I didn't mention either is that CapCut is sort of associated with TikTok. I don't know if it's owned by TikTok, but it's definitely associated with that for editing videos for TikTok. There's a mobile version too. So, you know, just knowing that you would think it's just like gimmicky and not really worth your time and in looking into. That's kind of what my first impression of it was. But once I actually edited a project in here, I was very surprised about how full featured it is and how capable it is. All right, so now with all our clips in here, we can start looking at these and just sort of assembling them into the timeline. So if you start clicking on these and playing them, you can kind of get an idea of what is what here and placing them in the right spot. That's kind of how I go about it here. So, all right, so I know, anyway, that's gonna go in, it's the first clip. So it doesn't matter what that is. So <laughs> I know that's the first clip. So I'm gonna look at this and then play this and say, okay, where does this belong? This belongs before or after this clip. And I'm gonna say after this clip, that's where I want that to be. So I'm gonna keep going here. So here's the pool. Okay, so do I want this before or after these clips of the sort of deck area? And I'm gonna say I want this after. So I'm just kind of assembling my story here, so to speak. And you can shrink the timeline 
down here, you can see this minus or plus, you, you know, this will shrink and magnify the timeline. I just use the plus and minus keys to magnify. If you go up here to shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, you can see all the keyboard shortcuts and you can change them. By default, it was like command plus or command minus on a Mac at least. So I just change it to plus or minus because that's how I have it in Premiere and that's what I'm used to. So you can change these to whatever you want, which is cool. It's fully customizable. Again, this is like nice feature and what you find in professional editing programs where you can change the key commands to be whatever you want. So that's nice. All right, so here's another low shot of the pool. I want that to come after this high shot of the pool. So I'm just gonna put that after. So I'm just assembling my edit here. So I'm not gonna waste your time and take you through this whole assembly process. You get the gist. I'm just putting clips in wherever they think they belong in the story, whether it's before these clips or after these clips or whatever, I'm just assembling them in a logical order and then we'll edit them. All right, so now you can see I have all my clips assembled in the order that I want them. And if you want to change the order of these, it's very simple. This is sort of like a magnetic timeline. So you can just move these clips around however you want, which is kind of a nice feature too. It makes things very easy to rearrange the order of your clips. So now that I have all the clips in the timeline, next thing I want to deal with is the speed of the clips. If you're familiar with real estate video editing, then you know most of the time people shoot in higher frame rates and convert those clips into slow motion in editing to make the clips look more graceful and smooth looking. Now for drone videos, some people don't do that and I do it slightly. So I shoot these in 30 frames per second and I like to drop them into 24 frames per second just to make them a little bit slower. So the first thing I want to do here is set my timeline to be 24 frames per second, which is what I want my final output to be. So how to do that is just if you deselect any clips in the timeline here, so nothing is selected, you'll see this details pane here come up. If you just go to modify and here we can change the frame rate to 24 frames per second. So that's fine. And now I just want to hit save. So now the timeline is in 24 frames per second. So now we have to drop these 30 frames per second clips down to 24. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to to shrink my timeline here and just select all the clips. And if you come up here to speed, you can adjust the speed. So right now it's one time speed. So it's just regular speed. And we wanna drop this down to the appropriate speed for 30 frames per second down to 24. So how you calculate this here is if you get your calculator and you put in 24 frames per second, which is what our timeline is in, and you divide it by the frame rate of the clips that you have, which is 30 frames per second, and you hit equals, it's 0.8, so it's 80% speed of the original clip in a 24 frames per second timeline. So it's 20% slower than normal speed. So again, the speed for these has to be 0.8. So if you go up here to this and you just go down to, so to 0.8 times. So now all these clips, you can see if I enlarge, you know, it says speed point 0.8 times. So now all these clips are in the speed they should be for a 24 frames per second timeline. So you can see, I mean, slightly, slightly slower. The drone clips, I just do a little bit. It makes it a little bit more dreamy looking and I like the look of it. So that's why I do 30 frames per second in a 24 frames per second timeline. All right, so now we have all our clips in the right speed. So now I'm gonna drop the music clip in here underneath. So I'm just gonna drop this audio in, just bump it up to the beginning. So here's a cool little feature. If you have the music selected and you go up here, there's auto beat. If I click on this, you have beat one or beats two. I'm just gonna go beat one and it's gonna analyze this and you'll see now these little orange markers here on the clip, it's analyzing the beats. So it will actually snap to these. So you can see how it's snapping to those. That's actually the beat of the music. So it's really assisting you to edit on the beats. So to make your video, you know, rhythmic with the music. So that's a cool feature. Adobe Premiere doesn't have that. So this is one of those things that Adobe Premiere doesn't even have that this has. That's kind of a cool little feature. You'll notice if you, do beats two, it's just a lot more beats and I think it's just too many, so I don't, I don't bother with that. I just do beats one is fine. So now we can start editing our clips. So first of all, I just wanna edit this to where it starts moving where I want it. So all right, I want it to begin about there and it will automatically snap back. So again, it's like this sort of magnetic timeline, which kinda cool, makes things a little bit faster workflow wise. I want this clip to fade in though. So with this selected, we can go to fade outs, so fade ins, fade outs, which is up here. If you go to animation and you have all these options here. So some of these, you know, are say pro on them. And this is for the paid version. If you wanted to pay for CapCut, you can get these other, you know, transitions and things in here, other features. But like I said, the free version is totally capable and there's a lot of cool transitions in here already that you can use for videos. So 
not even necessary to pay for it. So here you can see fade in, so this is what I want. So you'll see the clip now is fading in, but it's pretty darn quick, so I want it to, uh, you know, fade in a little, a little longer than that. So you can see here it's a half a second right now. I want it to be, you know, maybe two or three seconds. So I, I'm gonna try three. Now if you see, it's fading in pretty nice and slow. So that's a good fade in. For me, I like that fade in. The music is kind of taking too long to fade in. So I'm gonna actually cut the bottom of this off. Uh, the beginning of this off, I should say. And this is sort of a fade in little feature here too that you can drag. And that's better, it comes in faster. So right here on that beat, which will snap right to it, you can see uh, that's where I want to make my first cut. So another cool thing here is that you can cut the clips, delete right is W key and delete left is the Q key, which are right next to each other. And this is an awesome feature that a, a Premiere doesn't have either. I use, you know, ripple deletes and stuff in there, which is a cool feature, but this is actually even more intuitive. And I hope Adobe Premiere adopts this feature. Again, you know, a feature that Adobe Premiere doesn't even have. So essentially what that means is like wherever your playhead is, so on this beat, we want to delete everything to the right. So we want to hit the W key and boom, everything to the right just got deleted in that clip and then the next clip snap back right into that clip. And if I undo that, say I wanted to delete the beginning of the clip, I would hit Q. So that's everything to the left. So that would delete everything before that. So I want to undo that again. So as you can see, that's a really cool feature for workflow and editing, making things a lot faster. So I really like that feature here in CapCut. All right, so moving on to the next clip here, I'm just gonna move the playhead to where I want this clip to be starting, which is like somewhere about here. So again, I want to use the Q and the W key. So I want to hit the Q key. So everything to the left here will be deleted. And I want to hit play. So right there on that beat, again, I'll snap right to that beat. Now I can hit W because I want everything to the right here to be deleted. So there we have that clip. So that's that edit. All right, so again here, same thing. I just want to get this clip to where I want it to start. So say around there, I can get Q and delete everything to the left. And right there on that beat, I want it to cut. So I'm gonna hit W and delete everything to the right. So you can see this workflow here. It's very fast, very efficient. All right, here we have this clip approaching the house. And I'm gonna do a little speed ramp on this clip so we can take a look at that. So again, I want the clip to start right about here. So I'm gonna hit Q and delete everything to the left. And you can see it's taking quite a long time. So I wanna speed ramp it so it kinda of just gets to here a lot quicker, so. I want to end around here, say. So again, I'm just gonna hit uh, W and delete everything to the right. So now let's take a look at how to do a speed ramp. All right, so with this clip selected, let's go to speed here and we'll do a speed ramp. So next you wanna click on curve here and we wanna do customize. So we'll do our own curve here. So here you'll see these little handles here. All right, so the first thing we can do here is just grab these handles and I'm gonna drag this back to where I want the speed ramp to kind of start kicking off here, which is about here. And then I want it to get faster, obviously. I'm gonna drag this up and I'm just gonna drag this up and it'll snap to meet that. And we can adjust this to, to where we want it to be. So somewhere like here. And then finally we can adjust where we want this to roll off. But Somewhere around here should be good. So let's just now play this back and see what it's doing. You can see maybe it's a little too fast. So I'm gonna spread this out a little bit more, make it a little more gradual. That's better, even, even more gradual, I think. And, and you can adjust the speed. You don't have to go as fast either if you don't want. You can just bring this down, that'll decrease the speed. That was nice. So just a little speed bump there. And if we go here, we, you can see we can snap to that beat and then just delete everything to the right by hitting W. So now it should be pretty much in time with the music. 
So that's really how you do a speed ramp here in CapCut. So again, you know, something that is used in real estate videos all the time, it's here in CapCut and it's all free. So pretty cool. All right, so on this next clip here, I wanna use a, you know, sort of a zoom transition, which is also a popular thing in real estate videos. So, and it's also here available in CapCut. So I wanna get this to where I want it to start. I want it to start around here where you can see the full property. So I'm gonna hit W, I'm gonna hit Q, excuse me. So I can delete everything to the left. And now, and sort of the music rushes there too. So it's kind of perfect place to use that uh, zoom effect. So right there on that beat is where I want my edit to be. So I'm just gonna hit W and delete everything to the right. And I just wanna get this clip to where I want it to start here. So somewhere around there. So I wanna do a zoom out transition between these two clips. So if we go up here to transitions, you'll see you have all of these transitions in here. Again, if it says pro, you need to you know pay for it for that. But there's zoom transitions in here or pull in that's a zoom in and then there's a pull out too, which is right here, pull out. So that's like a zoom out transition. So I'm gonna put that right here in between these two clips. So now if we play this back, all right, that was cool, but it just went you know, way too fast. So I just, just drag this out to be a little longer. That's the max, let's see. Uh, that's pretty cool. So pretty cool that that transition is in there. I actually have those transitions in Premiere, but that's something I had to buy as an extra thing from like, you know, a third party maker. So, you know, that's not even natively available in Premiere. It's a natively available here for free. So, you know, that's cool that that transitions in here. And as you can see, there's like tons of, you know, transitions in here. I haven't even barely explored any of these. Maybe there's other cool ones here, but there's tons of, you know, trendy, cool little transitions in here if you want to go that route. Just don't go overboard with it. Obviously, you don't want to make it cheesy, but you know, you know, the pull in, pull out, I think is a tasteful one, but you know, some of these are probably a little over the top. So use them wisely. So another feature that I want to show you here that I use all the time for real estate video edits or any video edits for that matter is like color correcting or anything like that. So if you want to make any adjustments in that nature of that nature, just you know, select the clip. If you go to adjustment here, you'll see basic, you know, you got hue, saturation you know, all that stuff, curves, color wheel. And this is cool. This is just like Lumetri Color in Premiere. You have all the features here, really. There's nothing left out here. So, you know, say, you know, these are basic controls. Like this clip here, you can see it's like lacking contrast and stuff. So it needs some contrast. So if I just boost the contrast here, you know, maybe even decrease the shadows. So now look, all the, all those blacks are coming in. It was kind of a hazy day, as you can see, it just kind of got washed out a little bit. So definitely needed some contrast. And you know, you have all these other things like color temperature, if you needed to adjust that, hue, saturation, all this stuff, you know, it could even use a little bump of saturation. So this is something I do usually after I finish editing, I'll go through the clips and see if anything needs adjusting or tweaking as far as color or, you know, contrast, shadows, highlights, any of those kind of things, sweetening up the clips a little bit any way I can. So I'll use this to make those adjustments. It's all here, just like it is in Premiere, really cool. So if you wanted to turn off magnetic timeline, you know, the snapping and all that, you know, do have these options here of turning off you know snapping and you know linkage and all this stuff so you know those are all here so you can you know turn those off and move the clips anywhere you want if you wanted to have a gap in between for some reason or whatever you wanted to do that it's not you're not stuck with the magnetic timeline you can turn it all off there as well so also up here you know you have text you can add you know text and write it on here if you needed to do, add any text or anything also there's audio there's songs in here that you can use, I guess, royalty free. I don't know how that works, but uh, you know, I, I use Soundstripe usually for my songs. That's where I get this song, but I guess you could technically use, you know, any of these songs in here, you know, so <laughs> that's pretty cool too. I will say too, that this software is great for making reels like vertical videos for social media, for your agents. You know, that's what this is really geared towards and designed for technically, but you know, all these features in here, like these transitions, these, you know, songs and music and, you know, all this stuff. There's a lot of, you know, that trendy, like real stuff in here. So if you have agents that are doing that kind of thing, which is growing in popularity, this is a good tool for that. 
so yes, there's a lot of great features in here. So you know, a lot of stuff to explore, but you know, for mainly for real estate video editing, I think I showed you pretty much all the stuff. The last thing I'll speak about is exporting. So when you're done with your project, you can go up here to the export button and you know, it'll bring up this dialog box. So you can just say where you want it to save it to, you know, pick your folder and then, you know, resolution. These were shot in 4K actually, but I always export in 1080p. So that's what I would pick. And then the rest of this, you know, 24 frames per second, again, that's my timeline. So that's what I want it to be. And everything else, I just leave the default and export. And actually, I think this was default MOV. I like it to be MP4. So I just changed this to MP4 and then export and that's it. And you know, it's ready to go. So out of respect for your time, I'm not gonna bring you through this full edit, but those are all the features that I just demonstrated for you that I use for editing real estate videos. They're all here in CapCut. It's really not missing anything from Premiere. And again, there's even some features here that aren't even in Premiere. So, you know, it's pretty remarkable how full featured this is for a free editing software. It's pretty easy and straightforward. Once you edit one project with this, you'll pretty much know the ins and outs. It's not complicated. So, you know, this is a pretty cool tool. And if you're looking for a free video editing software for your real estate videos, I think this is a really good option. Obviously, it's very capable. So let me show you the finished full edited video here that I did for this drone video. You can take a look at that and I'll meet you on the other side. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video on CapCut. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. I have no affiliation or association with CapCut whatsoever. I'm not making any money on this. I'm not getting paid by them to advertise it. This is just something that my friend Ryan told me about. Thank you, Ryan, again, for another good idea for a video. But uh, he turned me on to it and said to check it out. So I did and I'm you know, pretty impressed with it. Obviously, I think it's you know very capable. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. And please check down in the description below for links to things that I have available like sky replacement pack, also editing practice packs, all kinds of good stuff down there. Also gear recommendations. There's a whole bunch of good stuff down there. So check that out. Thanks again so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon on the next one.